Hi, and welcome to a primer on functional design of experiments in JUMP. This primer assumes you're already familiar with DOE and JUMP's DOE tools, so if you're not, you might want to brush up on those first. Functional DOE, generally speaking, is an approach to answering questions of the type, how do some factors affect the shape of a curve? Take sunscreen, which absorbs UV light. Its absorbance can be measured across different wavelengths, forming a curve that represents its absorbance profile. We can use functional DOE to uncover relationships between a sunscreen's properties or its formulation and the shape of its UV absorbance profile to help make a more effective sunscreen. Or take the fuel economy of a car, which can be measured across different speeds, forming yet another curve. We could use functional DOE to see how a car's design affects its fuel economy curve so that we can make a more economical vehicle. Let's move on to one more example, the one we'll work on in Jump, which has to do with the milling of pigment particles for making LCD screens. The pigment for these screens needs to be milled down to a particular target size using a bead mill. There are a number of factors we can control in this milling process, for example, flow rate or temperature. And we want to know how these factors affect the decrease in pigment particle size over time. Uh, particle size over time forms yet another curve. And in the panel on the right, we actually see curves from six different milling runs with our target particle size shown in green there. With functional DOE, we can ask how these milling factors affect the shapes of these curves. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, here, we want to run the mill for as little time as possible, so we'd like to see a fast or steep drop-off in size initially. But we don't want to overmill our pigment, overshoot that green target range, and end up with particles that are too small. So after the steep drop-off, we'd like to see size level off nicely right inside that green area. So let's move on over to Jump now to see how functional DOE can help us figure out how to set our milling factors to achieve our desired curve shape. Here are data from an experiment in which we manipulated four milling factors and across a number of different batches recorded the size of the pigment particles at various time points. Now, as we mentioned, we're assuming that you're familiar with the basics of DOE and JUMP, so we're not going to design the full experiment right now. It is worth noting, though, that as of JUMP 15, when you're designing an experiment, you can specify a functional response type. Doing so will allow you to use the DOE tools that you're already familiar with to design your experiment, but it'll produce a design table that's ready for you to record functional or curve data. So that's all we're actually going to say about designing the experiment right now, because our focus really is on the functional data and how to deal with it. Let's take a quick look at these data first before we analyze them. So here we have size over time curves for 17 different batches. You can see some batch to batch variability in the shapes of these curves and our goal is to relate that shape variability back to our milling factors. You'll also notice down at the bottom a curve labeled target. Uh, these data aren't real. They're actually an ideal curve that I built into the data table to tell jump what our target curve would look like. This is going to play an important role in our analysis. So let's actually do that analysis now. I'll analyze the data using Jump Pro's Functional Data Explorer, which is under Analyze Specialized Modeling. First, I'll tell Jump that my functional data are defined by size over time. I'll let it know which batch is which, and I'll pass it our experimental factors. Here I have the Functional Data Explorer report window where we're going to perform the analysis. On the left, we can see data from each of our batches, and we also see our target curve shown in the green stars at the bottom there. I'm going to go ahead and tell Jump that that's our target curve and not real data. Next, I'm going to ask Jump to fit some flexible functions to each of our batches here. We'll use B-spline models to do this. Jumps fit a function to each of our 17 batches, and you can see those in the red lines there. Down below, Jumps performed a further analysis on these functions called functional PCA, where PCA stands for Principal Components Analysis. 
And in essence, what's happened is that each of those red functions has been summarized as this mean function here, plus or minus, some amount of this additional shape component or functional principal component that we see here. Each of our batches has been assigned a functional principal component or FPC score that says how much of that shape we should add in or out to approximate the shape of that batch's curve. For example, at the top here, we see for batch 2887, we have a score of about negative 83, meaning that we should subtract out a lot of that uh, shape component that we see. Down here at the profiler, in the first row in particular, we have a tool that allows us to visualize exactly what all this means. So on the left here, we have a pane that represents the shape of the curve for any individual batch. And over here, we have a line that allows us to just specify what that FPC score would be. We just saw that batch 2887 has a large negative score, about negative 83, which we see here. So let's see what happens to the shape of the curve as I subtract out some of that shape component or specify a large negative FPC score. We can see on the left that the resulting curve shape is really starting to look a lot like 2887, meaning that it looks like our model here is capturing the curve shape pretty well. All the way at the other end of the spectrum, we have batch 2899, which has a large positive score of 77. So let's see what happens when I switch to a large positive score. You can see that the curve shape on the left is starting to look an awful lot like batch 2899. So we have these component scores like negative 83 and 77 that help capture the shape of the curve for each batch. Now what we can do is build a model that relates our experimental factors to these shape scores. I'm gonna do that by requesting a functional DOE analysis. If we scroll down, we see that Jump has used Jump Pro's generalized regression platform to build a model relating our four experimental factors to the shape scores. The profiler here, which I'll make a little bigger, uh, helps us visualize how changes in our experimental factors affect the shape of the curve uh, by way of these shape scores. So I can, for example, change the value of percent beads and then immediately to the left there, see how the curve of uh, particle size over time changes in shape. I can do the same for percent strength and so forth. Now, because I included a target function when we launched the uh, initial analysis, I can ask in this profiler for jump to find me the factor settings that will most closely match our target curve. We can see that we found them here with high values of percent beads, percent strength, a low flow rate, and a high temperature. So there you have it. Uh, we have our factor settings that will get us as close to our target curve as possible. And looking at this panel here, we can see yeah, it's pretty good. We see a relatively steep drop off and then a nice leveling off inside our target range. The drop off might not be as steep as we wanted, but still looks pretty good. You can actually see right here where we have some discrepancy between our target and our achieved curve in the early going of our milling process. But all in all, we have a pretty nice result. So that's it. Functional DOE allows you to do a designed experiment when your response variable is a curve. And then Functional Data Explorer and Jump Pro makes it simple to analyze these data so that you can see how changes in your factors affect the shape of your response curve.